So what, what credibility does this de developer have? What's his experience and background? So, so far we've been told that he's an Australian citizen, but he, he's showing no local footprint. You can't, you look, you try to find out about anyone these days, they always, always run a footprint. They have a footprint somewhere in the internet. But this fellow has none that we can find. Um, he's held senior positions in Macau based hotels and casinos and he most recently worked at Wynn Resorts. So this we're getting out of the IAS. Uh, no similar development experience in Macau or Australia and no environmental record. So that's, I'm directly quoting out of the IAS. Okay, so that's, that's Mr Ken Lee. Uh, so what's his financial backing? Well, it also says that they can fund the IAS, which is this document um, which, uh, which they proposed to the state government that they should become a coordinated project. That's what the IAS is. Uh, they can also fund the EIS, which is the Environmental Impact Statement, which is the next thing that needs to be funded. But they can't fund the rest. They need other financiers for residential and student campus to be able to um, progress the development. Uh, they also say that they've engaged a long list of reputable and, and capable consultants. Well, uh, that, uh, we're going to show you something about those consultants in the, uh, when we look at the track record on the next slide. Um, but just to let you know, the track record so far has been um, when they did the clearing, there was a legal clearing. Uh, that was reported actually by, um, they were told to report that. Um, it involved the um, endangered palm that was on the property, I believe. Uh, there's been an illegal dam constructed, uh, and my understanding is this will need to be taken down and rebuilt. Um, this is the dam that's actually caused the sedimentation in the creek downstream. Uh, there's been no soil erosion and sediment plans Cited and there were no structures in place uh, prior to um, the the, fa the failure of the face of the dam, and there have been plumes of sediment um, sent down the creeks, and they've been observed by um, and documented by um, various people who live around the um, Owen Creek and Warrel and work around the Warrel Creek area. So. Um, most developers have to do clearing, obviously, uh, move soil around. Uh, if you've seen any of the developments of, say, Tully Close here or any of the other uh, streets here in Paranda, you will have seen that they will have put up sediment barriers um, and they do a lot of work to actually handle the clearing stage because they're not supposed to pollute the rest of the environment with the movement of materials around uh, the site that they're actually working on. But this hasn't happened on this site, and neither has the consultant been concerned about it, neither the operator nor the consultant. So here's, the, here's a photo from Google Earth of one of the ephemeral creeks. So I don't know if you can see, but from the bottom right hand corner you can see a few dots of trees and then it gradually running up there to the northwest, it uh, becomes more tree. This is actually a an ephemeral creek runs in the in the wet season and runs down into Owens Creek. So um, this is now what it looks like. That big scar of a dam there. Uh, and this is what it's produced um, down to the Barren River. So this is at the mouth of the creek. This is actually, this effect was produced in Owen Creek. This is actually Worrell Creek as well. There's some other clearing being done on the, on the Worrell uh, headwaters of the Worrell Creek, and this is the sort of what we can see. Now, the Barren River is not a very clean-looking river, is it? It's very tannin-coloured, and yet this is so you can quite clearly see the sediment that's actually coming out into the creek, uh, into the river. Sorry, from the creek. So that was after a rain event. So that was in June. On June 15, um, after three days of rain, I think we had about 70 mil. That was what was produced. Now we've never seen this creek running, running dirty like this. Um, that indicates a huge amount of uh, sediment has been, yeah, 70 mils over three days. It was hardly any rain yeah. at all. I mean, we're just really lucky that we didn't get any cyclonic events this 
season. And in fact, we didn't really, you know, we haven't had a, a wet season where we've had, you know, 100 mils in one day, just haven't had it. So thank goodness. However, um, that's very lucky on their part, not due to good management. So I don't know if you can see, but I just wanted to point out, because um, some people aren't that aware maybe of what, um, of what happens. When you don't have well compacted soil, you see all these rills here? They look like wrinkly skin. That's the erosion that's happened. Even here you can see it's, it's eroded down. So this is the internal part of the dam. Um, that is exactly what happened to the face of the dam as well. I mean, I think really if we'd had an event, a real rain event, that event the uh, dam may well have just collapsed. Um, there was insufficient uh, compaction done um, that scarring is just immense and that's been taken um, that was taken recently and we've had nice amounts of rain haven't we all through the season we haven't had any big lot of rain but we've had nice amounts of rain and I don't know about you but we've been cutting our lawn every few days at least once a week so really if there was anywhere that grass was, should grow it's, it's on there but it's so scraped down and so reeled out that you know, any, any scarab of soil that would grow something has been removed. So that's, that's the level at which the um, capable consultants are operating. So what are the next steps? Um, let's have a bit of a more positive approach here. Um, so the next steps are, um, well first of all we've had the initial advice statement, so that's been accepted as a state coordinated project, so that's We've done that bit in green. Um, we didn't, uh, the public doesn't have any opportunity to um, respond to an application by a proponent to become a state coordinated project, so there was nothing that we could actually um, access there. Uh, what does state coordinated project mean? So basically, a state coordinated project means that the state government will actually provide the, um, the coordination of all of the various departments that a proponent might need to go to for a project of this, of this type and size. So for instance, uh, there's threatened species there, so they definitely have to coordinate with the federal government's EPBC. Um, there's uh, the Environment and Heritage Protection who look after um, uh, who look after um, any problems on the on the land, so um, and permissions to clearing and so forth like that. There's the Department of Natural Resources, which actually that's the State Department look after the uh, the Vegetation Management Act, and so in relation to uh, again in relation to clearing, there's a bit of a crossover there, but they're just two separate departments that you have to coordinate with. There's the Marie Bishire Council that they'd have to coordinate with. There's the main roads that they would have to coordinate with for the roading. Uh, so they decided that they wanted to become a state coordinated project and they put up a proposal and that's what the I initial advice statement actually contains, is their arguments about why they should become a state coordinated project. Also it means that, they, uh, that the Marine Shire Council can say it's nothing to do with us yeah. The government's looking after this, so we get all relax. <coughs> so um, basically, the state will. Uh, so the next thing is the terms of reference. So here we do get a chance to um, submit on this. So there'll be probably public submission in September, we think. Um, the state. Um, Coordinator General's office, the person they've got in there managing the pro this particular project uh, on the state size side said that it would be completed around late August. So that terms of reference are basically all of the criteria that the person has to actually answer. So in this case, Kerwell will have to answer all of the elements that are in the terms of reference. Uh, they have to address them all in their environmental impact statement. Now the proponent's own timeline says that they will be able to complete the environmental impact statement by December 2016. Now, to, I was told that they were going to spend between one million and one and a half million dollars on this um, EIS. 
And so from my think, way of thinking, to have actually be able to complete it by December, to spend that much money by December means that you needed to have started quite some time ago, well before now, in other words. So that's a bit interesting in itself. So there'll be a public submission period January to February next year. Let's hope it doesn't come out at Christmas time when everyone's away. Yeah. And we've got 20 days to respond. No. So, um, so there's going to be some work to do as soon as this terms of reference are released. Um, so public submission in September. Um, they should release the, them also in September, um, late September, I would think. And then we'll have three months to actually take a look at how we're going to respond. Does each government, so, apart from, uh, each government department that's involved in the environmental impact study in terms of reference, do they have to supply a published paper? Or is it just the minister goes, yes, thank you, Ben? Is there a public, but is there a paper that they have to produce that's available to read by the public? After, oh, you mean... As, being, as each, as an individual entity like Main Road. That's a good question. Um, and when they actually review the environmental uh, impact statement, that's a very good question. I don't actually know the answer to that, but we'll find out. Can I take a minute? <laughs> so <coughs> the um, now that we're, now it's up to the government, right, to to um, come out with and say uh, to the proponent, you've got to uh, give us your best shot on. This, 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 and this. That's what the terms of reference are. Yes, that's right. So the sorts of things that are in the terms of reference, um, just out of interest. Thank you. There is a draft terms of reference um, uh, up on the website, and that that'll up on the state government website, and that'll be altered, but. Uh, no doubt, just specifically for this project, but it's things like land use objectives, flora and fauna objectives, water quality, hazards, health and safety objectives, social and economic um, objectives. Okay. So, um, any questions about that? Uh, the public submission period they said for the EIS was 20 days. Who was that? That was the State Coordinator General's. Um, uh, no, I spoke directly to the State, to the, state uh, the Coordinator General's office, yeah, uh, the, the fellow who's. That's discretionary, so when you respond to your terms of reference, ask for more time. It's not okay. That. It's not that. It's not, okay. And how would the community be advised <coughs> that there there have been the comments on it? Is that something that we published in, in the press or I mean, it might be on the, the government website, but not everybody looks at the government websites, do they? Oh, when it starts, we'll make sure that. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm just talking about, you know, if, oh, if we didn't yes. work as a team, you know, you could miss out on that, couldn't you? The problem with the federal government's uh, website in terms of the environmental protection and biodiversity control, they don't tell you even. They don't. There's no notification process that you can get. You know that something's going to be submitted to them and you're waiting because you don't want to make a response. No. You've got 10 days to make a response, but you don't even know when it goes up. And the own, their own department, one section of their own department, doesn't know when the other section puts it up. It's just, that's a whole other story. When you respond to the terms of reference, again, you can say what this community expects in terms of public notification. So this community doesn't have great internet access. So we'd like the public notification on our community notice board. We'd like a single person from each environment group sent all of the documents personally. That sort of thing. You can specify that, but that's what this community requires. That's great. Thank you. Thank you.